Hello everyone and welcome back to our lecture series on pharmacology. Today I present to you the third part of the lecture series entitled Drug Invention and the Pharmaceutical Industry. This is an extensive topic and I divide it into several parts to present to you. My name is Dr. Carlos Rogério Figueiredo. I'm an adjunct professor at the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Turku in Finland. And before we begin, I just want to take a moment to emphasize the importance of your support for this project. Uh, by subscribing to our channel and sharing uh, this video with others or your friends who might be interested as well, you become an invaluable part of our community and together we can create a platform here where ideas, perspectives are challenged. So feel free to put your comments uh, below. Let's make this uh, channel more active in terms of questions and answers and participation as well. And let's try to understand better about what's the role of pharmaceutical industry in this aspect. And so please hit that subscribe button and, and share this video to make a, a meaningful impact to the channel and also a meaningful impact to the society. And thank you very much for your support so far. So the FDA is a regulatory agency within the US Department of Health and Human Services. And then the most important mission and objective of the FDA is not actually to release drugs in the market. The FDA, this is actually the outcome, but the FDA's mission is to ensure safety, okay? They also want to ensure the efficacy, and but they want to secure uh, the, the human and veterinary drugs will not be unsafe. They want to test all these biological products and medical devices and the nation's food supply and cosmetics as well, and all the products that could even uh, release radiation. All those kind of things, they are dangerous, right? So the FDA aims to promote public health by facilitating the development of these innovative uh, products, but they also want to ensure that they are effective, right? You just don't, don't want to, to release something that, okay, it's safe, but has no effect. So they combine both things, safety and efficacy. It also strives to provide the public with accurate science-based information to optimize the use of these medicines and also foods for better and health outcomes for human society. So let's elaborate a little bit more about clinical trials and the role of the FDA. The first drug-related law in the United States was the Federal Food and Drug Act of 1906 right, which primarily focused on regulating the transportation of corrupted and mislabeled foods and drugs across state lines. However, it did not require at the time a proof that the drug was uh, effective or even safe. Then, in 1938, they made some amendments to the act after a tragic incident involving 105 children that they died from consuming elixir sulfanilamide, which is a mixture of sulfanilamide and a highly toxic solvent called <clears throat> diethylene glycol. So the responsibility for enforcing the amendment act was assigned to the FDA at the time. And then after that, the toxicity studies and the approval of a new drug application, the NDA that I just mentioned before, it became necessary before a drug could be advertised and distributed. But still at the time, the safety was addressed uh, to a new drug, but they still didn't need to prove the effectivity of this drug. And then in 1960s, the introduction of thalidomide, which is a sedative drug with no apparent advantages over existing options at the time, in Europe it led to a devastating discovery. Epidemiological research later revealed that thalidomide, if, they are ta if it's taken uh, during early pregnancy, it causes severe and rare birth defect, which is known as false milia. So in response to this strategy, the US Congress introduced new amendments requiring the, the need for evidence of both efficacy and favor of risk to benefit ratio to specific disease being treated. So, the more serious the disease, actually the greater the acceptable level of risk because the disease is also extremely challenging. So one of the FDA's primary responsibilities is actually to protect the public from harmful medications. But the agency faces significant challenges as well, specifically considering the 
perception that its mission is nearly impossible to achieve with the current available resources that they have. And it's important to note that harm can arise not only from drugs causing un unexpected adverse effects, but it also can be caused by delays, delays in the approval process that prevent the introduction of these new drugs with crucial benefits to the public. So striking a balance between ensuring safety and efficacy before widespread marketing of a new drug, it requires careful deliberation. So what's the definition of clinical trials? In the context of a new drug research, clinical trials are investigations. Investigations that involve human subjects in order to gather data on how a potential drug will behave in the body. For that, clinical trials will always address the pharmacokinetics of the drug, or what the body is actually doing with the drug. It involves understanding how a drug is absorbed, distributed, metabolized, and also eliminated from the, uh, from the body. On the other hand, we have the term pharmacodynamics. And pharmacodynamics refers to what the drug does to the body. It focuses on understanding how a drug interacts with the body and produces its effects. Pharmacodynamics involves studying how a drug binds to the specific target inside of the body, such as receptors, enzymes, and so forth, and, and how it changes their activities and functions in order to achieve a particular outcome, especially in a disease context. So, this knowledge helps determining uh, how a drug produces uh, its desired therapeutic effects and as well as any potential side effects or interactions with other substances as well. So both pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics are crucial in understanding how drugs work and how they can be used effectively and safely in medical treatments. So clinical trials, they serve various purposes depending on their nature and their phase as well. There are several phases for clinical trials. And they might evaluate, for example, drug safety, efficacy, efficacy for treating or preventing specific conditions and its tolerability and side effects as well. So for a drug to gain approval for sale in the United States and also everywhere, it must, it must demonstrate its effectiveness and also it must establish an acceptable level of safety. It needs to be acceptable. So, the U.S. National Institute of Health, it sets like seven ethical requirements that must be met before a clinical trial can even start. And this includes, for example, ensuring social value. Now, okay, this drug has social value. It, it has scientific validity. It was evaluated properly in preclinical stage. There's a lot of validation, especially if we're talking about a drug or a therapeutic approach that was published um, in major journals. As I previously mentioned, it needs to be well validated and published high, right? So it means that was the peer review process was exhaustive. So scientific validity is extremely important. And also it needs to be fair and objective, the selection of the participants. It, it, it can't be biased. It needs to be fair to everyone. Uh, as, as long as they meet the, the, the study criteria, inclusion criteria as well. But anyhow, you need to also obtain informed consent. So the, the participants, they need to know what's going to be done and they need to accept participating in the studies. So there is a voluntary decision on, on their side and this needs to be documented as well. And it needs to assess the favorable risk to benefit ratio that I previously mentioned before and receiving approval and oversight also from an independent peer review process. So there is a review, a peer review, I mentioned a peer review, but there is a review board that will evaluate the, the clinical trial before it starts. So respecting the rights and well-being of the human subjects that are involved is the utmost importance in a clinical trial. Regulated by the FDA, uh, clinical trials typically uh, progress through four phases and pe people usually think about three phases, phase one, two and three for clinical trial, but actually four. So phases one to three, they essentially focus on assessing the, the drug safety and effectiveness, while the, the phase four actually is the post-marketing trial. It gathers additional information on new uses and risks and even optimal dosing as well. So things that you can only measure after a longer period of time with more people. 
So this is the phase four. So after completion of the phase three, the sponsor, which is usually a pharmaceutical company, applies to the FDA for approval to market the drug. So this is after the phase three. So then the, the, the pharma will apply and they will commercialize the drug. And this application, either a new drug application, what I just mentioned is the NDA uh, document, or biologics license application, or BLA, uh, it provides comprehensive information, including all data from hundreds of thousands of individuals who participated in the phase three testing. This usually includes multi-centers, right? So you have a, a worldwide multi-center uh, effort to validate a new drug before its commercialization. So there will be a clinical center in the United States. There will be different clinical centers in Europe. There will be clinical centers in the Nordics. And then they are all evaluating these patients and this particular disease in the same condition. All this data is being collected and being evaluated by the principal investigator. And it will be evaluated all together with proper statistical validation tests to ensure the success of this clinical trial. So you have heterogeneity in terms of the public as well from different parts of the world. This is amazing. And that's how you validate a clinical trial. So specialist teams, they will review the applications in the, in the FDA and external experts might be consulted for complex cases to assist and, and make important decisions in, the, in that case. So, so the Prescription Drug User Fee Act or PDUFA enacted in 1992 and then updated in 2007, actually it requires pharmaceutical companies to contribute user fees to the FDA. And these fees actually help expedite the drug approval review process and enhance the FDA's drug safety program. And also the fees uh, help FDA to allocate more resources for reviewing or television drug advertisements and etc. So after the implementation of these fees and, and allocation of more resources, um, and I would say, although the larger the FDA staffing has shortened the review time, uh, the process uh, in reviewing new drugs in the FDA still remains lengthy. And usually the standard uh, review time is around one year and with a target of six months for drugs granted priority status due to their importance in addressing unmet needs. So six months for those urgent cases. But meeting these uh, targets is not always possible. So before a drug is approved for marketing, um, the company and the FDA, they must reach the agreement uh, on the drug's prescribing information and, and known as the label or the package insert. And the label includes approved indications for the use of the drug, dosage instructions, potential side effects, and special warnings and precautions. So and everything that you're reading there in the label, actually, it was discussed before and agreed between pharma and FDA. Mm -hmm. And the pharmaceutical companies, they must ensure that their, their promotional materials align with the information that is contained in the label when they are promoting that. So it's important to note that the physicians, they, they are not bound uh, by the label and, and they may legally prescribe a drug for any reasonable purpose. That, that's true actually. So they are not bound to that. But regardless, the information that the company advertise, it needs to meet uh, the, the label of the product. So as you can see, the process of drug development is a complex and challenging endeavor and it is influenced by economic reality. It's very clear. Funding from profit companies, philanthropists and taxpayers they all contribute to research and development, whatever is their own interest and focus. For example, rare disease or, or more common disease that generates more profit, but they all contribute. In the end, you have a drug. And this potential drug will go uh, through a rigorous testing. Must, it must uh, demonstrate safety and efficacy. It must comply with the regulatory standards. And finally, it must receive approval by a regulatory agency. We are talking about an FDA or EMA from Europe to reach the market. And this journey encompasses scientific, medical, ethical, regulatory, and economic considerations. So when evaluating the economic viability of drug invention efforts, it's essential to consider all these dimensions and the interplay between them.
Thank you very much for following up this lecture until now. If you have any questions, just leave in the comments below and more than happy to come and answer for you. Until our next lecture, stay curious and keep learning. Bye-bye.